Oh, hey guys. Um, my name is Jean, and guys, I love hanging out with middle school students. Have you noticed this is my friend Skittles? Isn't she a beautiful butterfly? <laughs> battery operated, runs on battery juice. I don't know what you call that. Oh. <laughs> I love middle school students, but I know that one of the things that many of you probably struggle with is bullying. And here's the reality. Around one in four teens report being bullied in some way. That's a lot of people who are experiencing bullying. The unwanted, repeated, aggressive behavior that can cause harm physically, emotionally, and socially. And that's why we're talking through this topic today. Now before we get too far into our conversation, here are two things to remember about bullying. First. It's not a single incident or a one-time bad choice. It's a consistent behavior over time, repeated and done on purpose to harm someone else. Second, it's one-sided. It's a way for a person or group of people to use their power, like physical strength, popularity, or knowledge to hurt or control others. So when it comes to bullying, we may initially think of physical harm, like hurting someone's body or damaging their possessions. And it's true. Punching, tripping, spitting, pinching, breaking things, or using rude gestures is one form of bullying. And it's actually not the most common type of bullying. People are more likely to experience verbal and social bullying than physical bullying. Verbal bullying can include things like name calling, teasing, threatening, and saying rude, nasty, or inappropriate things to or about someone. Social bullying is a little different. It can damage someone's relationships, reputation, or acceptance. It can include things like spreading rumors, embarrassing or shaming someone for who they are and the choices they've made. Oh my gosh, did you see what she was wearing? And intentionally excluding someone and encouraging others to do the same. You can't come to my birthday party. And these types of bullying don't just take place in person. Social and verbal bullying can take place on digital platforms like cell phones, tablets, and computers as well. Cyberbullying can be done through text messages, apps, social media, and even certain gaming programs. Cyberbullying can include sending, sharing, and posting things that are meant to harm someone. Things like sharing a photo that wasn't intended to be public, or posting something embarrassing about someone, or making fun of someone's Instagram stories. These are all types of cyberbullying. Now, most of the time, when it comes to any kind of bullying, there are at least four different people involved. So let me show you what I mean. All right, guys, don't make fun of my drawings. Oh gosh, this, the drawer is stuck. Oh no. This might seem a little bit silly, but it's gonna be awesome. Here we have our bully. Super angry. Almost has a unibrow right there, but not quite connected. Maybe that's why he's so angry. This is the person who's actually hurting others with their words or actions. They may not look all that scary or intimidating here, but trust me, the bully is definitely bad news. Why? Because they're hurting someone else. All right, I'm gonna move you over here. Skittles, I'm gonna move you off to the side right here. And this person, they're the ones who are on the receiving end of the bully's harmful actions or words. So in other words, they're having a pretty rough time. Our bystander. This is a person who sees how someone else is being treated, but they don't get involved or try to stop what's happening. They may not look like they have much to do with what's happening, but they see it. So like it or not, they're involved. And finally, the adult. This is a trusted adult, like your teacher, your parents, a small group leader, or a coach, who can be a safe person to talk to about any bullying you've experienced or witnessed. Now I know that adults in your life may not look as cool as this one. I mean, it's that nice smile there, he looks so happy. But trust me, they can still help you out. <laughs> so whether we realize it or not, we all might play each of these roles at some point in our lives. And no matter what role we're playing, it's important to remember that bullying is a big deal. 
It impacts lives, causes pain, and can affect how people value themselves. So whether we see it happening, it's happening to us, or we're treating someone in a hurtful way, we've got to figure out what to do when it comes to bullying. Oh, Skittles. The good news is that we can find some answers in the Bible, because through it, God gives us the tools to live a better life, one that doesn't involve bullying. And it starts with the way we see ourselves. In the book of Ephesians, the writer Paul wrote some words that are important when it comes to how we value ourselves. I think Paul has a pretty interesting perspective on this whole bullying thing, because he actually lived part of his life as a bully, and the other part as the one being bullied. So no matter where you're coming from, Paul gets it. Paul explained that because of Jesus, we are made new. And we don't have to let the words and actions of others define us. Instead, we can view ourselves like this. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Do you know what a masterpiece is? It's a really prized, valuable piece of art. In fact, a masterpiece is usually an artist's best piece of work. So when Paul called us God's masterpieces, he basically said that we're God's best work. We're his most prized, valuable possessions. Think about it this way. A masterpiece is a protected piece of art. You aren't allowed to touch it, you can't change it, and you definitely can't do anything to damage or harm it. If someone ruins a really famous masterpiece, you're in big trouble. All right, so I've got this picture on my wall. It's of the Mona Lisa. Let me, let me get it for you real quick. So here we have the lovely Mona Lisa. So this portrait was painted by a really talented guy named Leonardo da Vinci. And it's now protected behind a super thick piece of glass and surrounded by bodyguards in a museum. Yes, yes, this painting is actually protected by bodyguards. That means it's a pretty big deal. It's a masterpiece. Now could you imagine if someone went up to the Mona Lisa and added a mustache or scribbled all over it? Rawr. Rawr. I scribbled all over it. You would never do that to a masterpiece. It's like the Mona Lisa. Or I mean, you would never do that to a masterpiece like the Mona Lisa. It's too valuable, respected, and loved. So why is it that we can't imagine ruining a really old painting that's considered a masterpiece, but we do it all the time to God's masterpieces? Why would we ever feel that it's okay to use our words and actions to bully others? If we really saw ourselves and others as the masterpieces we are, I think it might change the way we treated each other. Let's go back to the book of Ephesians. A few chapters later, Paul described what it looks like to actually treat each other as masterpieces. He said, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that our actions, words, attitudes, and thoughts should be encouraging, used to build people up, not tear them down. We should treat people as the masterpieces they are. And when we don't, when we bully, we're harming God's masterpieces. When we say or do hurtful things to another person, we're breaking down God's best work. And not just that, we're not acting like the masterpieces God created us to be. My point is this, God created us as his masterpieces. He created us to be better than bullying, to be better than destructive talk and hurtful actions and intentional choices made to harm other people. We're all masterpieces, and we deserve better than bullying. So if you're being bullied, first let me say this. I'm so sorry that this is happening to you. You don't deserve to be treated this way. Remember, no matter what other people say or do, you are God's masterpiece. He made you the way you are on purpose. He values you, and his opinion matters more than anyone else's. Second, know that you can speak up. Find a trusted adult and talk to them about what's going on. It's not betraying someone or turning them in. It's standing up for your right to be treated with respect, 
to be treated like the masterpieces you are. An adult can't help if they don't know what's going on. Now, if you are bullying or have bullied someone, you aren't defined by your actions, but you're making a choice that's hurting others, and that's not okay. You, too, are masterpieces, and that means that the words and actions you're using to hurt others aren't reflecting that truth about who you are. The good news is this. Just like you make a choice to bully, you can also make a choice to view everyone, including yourself, as masterpieces created in Jesus. And when you do, it will change the way you treat and think about yourself and others. If you're the bystander, it's important that you speak up when you see others being treated in a way that doesn't honor them. You would want someone to speak up for you, right? When you see someone being bullied, ask yourself how you can show that person that they're God's masterpiece. So maybe it's by standing up to the bully, following up with the person who was bullied to show that you care, or bringing an adult into the situation to help. So today, you may need to take some action. If you've been bullied, maybe you need to talk to a trusted adult like your small group leader about your situation. If you're the bully, you may need to apologize and ask forgiveness from someone you've hurt. And I suggest you to talk to an adult about how you can choose healthier thoughts and actions in the future. And finally, if you're the bystander, encourage or support someone you see who has been left out, seems sad, or has been bullied. So remember, God created us as his masterpiece, all of us. Imagine what it might look like if we lived out this truth. I'd like to think that the number of students being bullied would drop drastically. So let me ask you a question. What can I do to help put an end to bullying?